Welcome to the BetMGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas. Hope you had a little time with family. A little bit. Okay. You didn't work too much yesterday. Uh, I mean, I thought we came in and was able to get prepared for today and then, you know, practice tomorrow. So, you know, I think that there's a good balance. All right. All right, we got a little balance, and the Titans needed to restock the practice squad after having to call so many guys up last week. So today, the Titans signed five players to the practice squad. Two guys really jump out to me: Devin Asiasi. Let me try. Asiasi. Asiasi. Devin Asiasi. I'll have it by Sunday. I promise. Tight end out of UCLA, and then Tay Crowder, linebacker from Georgia. A couple players that we knew a lot about in the 2020 draft. Four of the five guys you actually signed are veteran players. Is is there a feeling you may need them? Well, I think so. You know, at this point in time, you just want to make sure that guys, um, you know, this isn't a developmental process now. This is, you know, who are we going to need uh, to to fill out the, the game day roster, whether that be in, in offense, defense, and especially special teams. So, you know, we'll see where these guys go and they progress. Uh, worked out well and I've already started meeting with the coaches and uh, we'll see how they work their way through the week. Asi, asi. Asi, asi. Asi, asi. There we go. How about Mike Vrabel's six-pack? So there I can go. get myself out of trouble already. Six of the best plays from Sunday's game. Let's see a little defense. Let's see a little pass rush. Let's see a little Arden Key. Well, good get off. Um, you know, that's a uh, good job on the back side. You know, it was four by one. You know, the quarterback looked over to the weak side on the slant, had that covered. Uh, came back and, and again this is an example of us you know complementing each other working together letting the back end you know help the pass rush if the quarterback does that he pumps and comes back we, we have to be able to get there and make a play and he did fumble but unfortunately for the Titans he fell right on it yeah you know we just have to continue to tomahawk the ball continue to attack the ball and, and, and hopefully we'll get it out let's see another defensive play Aziz Al Shire with an outstanding effort to help keep these guys, these Seahawks out of field goal range at the end of the first half. Yeah, and then third and long, and this does, you know, Aziz does a nice job of, of getting off a little bit, but then, you know, again, the quarterback has nowhere to go with the ball, uh, you know, progresses over, and then Aziz is able to, to really get a tackle for loss and, you know, an excellent play that they ended up forcing them to punt. Zach Charbonneau taken out of bounds for minus four there. All right, one more defensive play. This one came from early in the third quarter, and it forces uh, the Seahawks into a field goal try. Good effort by Terrell Edwards. It, it really was, and you can see, you know, we I don't know if we're going to get another look at it, but they're in a bunch, and they work their way through a bunch. We, you know, communicate. They tried to, you know, they were expecting one coverage here. He dips in, like where it's going to be cover four, and then goes vertical, and, and Terrell stays square. And really, you could argue that this is OPI. You know, DK runs into him. Basically, we're square. And, you know, Terrell does a great job of being square, challenging, not backing up, and then going up there and stabbing through the pocket. You know, a really nice play there on third down. Battled him all the way to the ground, too, which you have to do with that big monster. Yeah, you better. Yep. And, and that was a heck of a job. All right. Let's look at a good offensive play here. One that Mike Vrabel had to challenge and win on. Super catch and a good throw as the Titans complete it from Tannehill to Burks. Yeah, didn't have a very good look at it, obviously. Just had to rely on, you know, upstairs and trailing keeps running. And, you know, the officials come in. And again, all you have to do is say incomplete or catch. And then, you know, one of us has to go about their business of challenging. And so we waited. They said incomplete. We got another look and uh, decided to challenge. So good job by the guys upstairs and communicating. Traylon does an impressive job to get the feet down. At first look, it didn't look like he did. And then when you saw the replay, he clearly did. Yeah, those are some tight ones on the sideline. It happened fast. And, and so, you know, you, you just 
you have to, to see what they call and then decide if you're going to challenge it or try to go on the football. Those are our bang-bang plays. Let's see a Derrick Henry touchdown run that put the Titans in front in the fourth quarter. Nice effort from two yards out by everybody involved. Yeah, it was. It was a good job on the backside. You know, and Derrick goes back here, cuts back on the backside, and, and Dre Dillard and, and, and John uh, O.J. Uh, and, and Traylon, you know, are involved here. And you can see where the, the backside ends up being really the point of attack. You know, we're able to wash everybody in there uh, to the right, and, and Derek's able to, to pretty much go in there close to untouched. So, let's see another good quarterback. Execution. Another quarterback sack here from Harold Landry coming in the fourth quarter. Landry now has nine and a half on the year. Yeah, and again, the quarterback has to go and look somewhere else. And again, Harold's trying to get the ball out. These are the ones that we have to come in here on first glance here and try to come down with the right hand. And Tomahawk, as he's bringing him to the ground, he goes with the rake. Um, but we, we, we have to start, you know, trying to get the, the ball uh, from the quarterback. That's the easiest target. And, you know, these are good opportunities. And as he's going down, you can see where Harold's trying to get the rake. So big play in the game and just, you know, need some more of them. All right, let's take a look at one bonus play from the goal line. Marlon Davidson, number 92, does the job here. And he's playing good football for you right now. Well, he's getting an opportunity and uh, he's taking advantage of it, uh, working extremely hard. You know, we're, we're lined up, you know, ready to go. We got two off the edge, so the, the quarterback can't really read it and pull it because there's uh, Harold. And so when they block down, Marlon does exactly what he was coached to do, which was tackle a dive, and good things happen, and next time it'll be a fumble. So he comes through with two tackles in the ball game, that tackle for loss. Marlon Davidson also three quarterback pressures, so effective snaps overall for the Titans. Okay, when we come back, We've got to see the halfback pass, and the only way for us to see it is through the Vrabel straight. It's over there. I want to take a, I'm dying to know how this worked so well. That's next when the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek continues from the BetMGM studio. Stay with us. Mike Vrabel show in the Bet MGM studio presented by Seat Geek. Time now for the Vrabel Strader. Here we are. And the halfback pass, Derrick Henry, who's now 8 of 10 for 40 yards and five touchdowns passing in his career. Counting, What's that rating? Has he got a rating on that? It's pretty high. It's pretty darn it's, high. It's pretty 158.3. high. 158.3. No, it's not 158. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not quite <laughs> that high because his yards per attempt darn. hurt him. But he does throw it well. Yes. And I think Titans fans love to see the King throw the ball. And the setup on this play was fascinating. Well, you know, it starts here with, you know, trying to be better in the red zone. And certainly when, when Derek's running the football, some of these plays uh, can start to, to work off each other and, and build off each other. So, you know, three tight ends, one of them being an XL lineman. So John uh, Ojakoya comes in and reports as eligible. You know, you got hot backside, so if they start to cheat the post safety, you know, away, those are options over there one-on-one. -on -one. But just really a base run here for us. This is going to be a gap scheme power, and you're going to see everybody blocking back, blocking down, protecting the gap inside. Uh, Peter pulling around, Ryan in a the, in the pistol uh, with Derek. Why in the pistol? Just to give us a little bit more time. Okay. You know, felt like, you know, to show us some different things. Derek's going to take the handoff, and Chig – you know, is going to come in and, and briefly sell this and, and try to get, you know, this guy to bite up. It, it's the guy back here who, who really, you know, I think just was being patient, but I didn't think that he was going to stand there flat-footed. You could see the puller, and Derek gets this guy to bite, gets the corner to bite, and then now we're just able to run away uh, from the post safety, obviously, there. And, and the biggest thing is you want to make a platform for Derek. You want to give him an opportunity to sell the run like we've done here, but also build a somewhat of a pocket and make him protected to still have to throw the football, you know, to a guy that's a moving target. And, you know, we tried it earlier with uh, Indianapolis and, and we were just a couple inches, you know, too off. far here. Now I, I thought just a great job of Chig of running away from this thing. Derek giving him a good ball. And like you said, that's the longest half second oh. in the game right there. When we, when we look up, you know, doing the game on the radio, we look up and you see the guys all alone and you're like, oh, please catch it. Look at that. 
That's a thing of it's, beauty. It is a thing of beauty. But I love that. The pistol part was I wanted to ask you about why don't you run it out of the pistol. And a Juku with a block here, man, he takes his guy. That, that guy gets after it. He did. He, he played about 16 plays for us and, and helped us in a run game. You know, and we'll get better. You know, that's his first action. That's his first game action as a, as a Tennessee Titan, whether that's preseason or regular season. Excited for guys like that. John Ajuku, number 61. When we come back, Epic Western Spotlight with a pretty good story about a guy on the Titans coaching staff who didn't get right into coaching after his playing career ended. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Welcome back to the Bike Rabel Show presented by Seat Geek. In tonight's epic Western spotlight, we share a story of a Titans offensive coach who was working in a different field roughly 20 years ago. He was actually in charge of an NFL stadium. It was a super job and he was successful. But Charles London's heart told him that he wanted to be on the field, on the sidelines to be exact. So he gave up this great job and started at the bottom of the coaching ranks. The move has totally paid off. Charles London is wrapping up his first season as the Titans quarterback coach and passing game coordinator. He came to Tennessee from the Atlanta Falcons where he was an important part of Arthur Smith's staff. London chose a move to the Titans for a multitude of reasons, including familiarity. This is kind of my second stint here. I was here in uh, 2011 as well, so uh, very fond memories. But, uh, you know, the chance to work for Coach Rabel and to, to work with Tim Kelly again and a lot of guys on the offensive staff and defense staff who I was familiar with had worked with, the, whether I was at Penn State or at Houston with the Texans. So Timmy and I were together for, uh, you know, two years at Penn State and four years together at Houston, and obviously we've remained in touch since then. But uh, I understand what he's trying to do understand how he thinks. To understand how Charles London thinks, you have to understand how he came into coaching. When he finished playing football at Duke, he didn't think becoming a football coach was in the cards. He thought instead about going into the Secret Service or the CIA, but he loved sports, so he accepted an internship under future NFL announcer Charles Davis at Disney's Wide World of Sports in Orlando. And then I got into stadium and event management. So I was uh, 1999 and went to Cleveland Brown Stadium to help them open their new stadium as the assistant manager and then eventually got hired by the New England Patriots as their director of um, stadium operations for Gillette Stadium. And then one day you say, eh, I want to coach. Yeah, I was probably 29, 30 years old. I mean, did you, did you think to yourself at that point, Look, I, this is what I want to do, but I can't give this up. You know, I did. There were some, it was some tough decisions to make, but I told myself, look, I don't want to regret this for the rest of my life. I think I want to coach, and if I'm going to pull the trigger, I, I got to do it now. So um, I left my job in New England, went back to Duke where I played, and started as a graduate assistant. Attack it, attack it, attack it, attack it, attack it. Charles London went from Duke to a quality control job with the Bears. He scouted for the Philadelphia Eagles. We mentioned that he spent 2011 on the offensive staff with the Titans. Then it was on to Happy Valley. Another great experience for London, his time on the staff at Penn State. When I went to Penn State, um, I was a recruiting coordinator and running backs coach, so the evaluation of talent really carried over to the recruiting coordinator aspect of it. For the last 10 seasons, he's been back in the NFL with the Houston Texans, with the Chicago Bears, with the Atlanta Falcons, and now back with the Tennessee Titans. Real life experiences, chasing his passion, 20 plus years learning every aspect of the game, being willing to do any job. That's why Charles there London there is the Good perfect coach place. to develop Will Levis and why he enjoys working with head coach Mike Frabel. You know, I, I, he's demanding, but he's fair. And I, and I think that's all you can ask for. I think he's got a great relationship with the players. Um, obviously, he's been a player, so he can relate to him in that way. And I think the players really appreciate that. But he's direct, and he's honest, and he's fair. And that's all you can ever ask for for a coach. And I think he's a great motivator. And I haven't been with him for a season in a while since we were together in Houston. But the way he prepares the team is very unique. Wanted to give you a chance to meet Charles London, who uh, took a big chance. I mean, that's a pretty good job you've got running Gillette Stadium, and then you say one day, that's not my passion. 
and to start over. Oh. It wasn't like it was come to Duke to be the receivers coach right. or the offensive coordinator. It was to come to be a GA. And, uh, you know, that, that's just following what you, what you love and what you believe about yourself. And you try to have a lot of people like that around you, people who love the game and have that sort of passion. Well, and that shows, and I, and I really was excited about being able to, to add Charles this offseason, and, um, you know, it worked out, and uh, giving him the opportunity to, to, to work here with the quarterbacks is something that he wanted uh, an opportunity at, and, and I have interviewed him for the offensive coordinator, realized that uh, I would want him a part of our staff, and that worked out. Epic Western Spotlight enjoyed bringing that to you when we come back. Kids ask Coach Vrabel. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show from the BetMGM studio, presented by CQ. Glad to have you with us on this Tuesday night for the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seat Geek. We're in the BetMGM studio, and it's time, time now for, for the best part of the show. Kids ask Coach Vrabel. Hi, Coach Vrabel. My name is Evan, and I'm seven years old. And I was going to ask you, what does it feel like to be a coach? Tighten up. Tighten up, Evan. Uh, what does it feel like to be a coach? Uh, I would say that there is a wide range of emotion uh, throughout the week and through in preparation. Um, the, the game takes a lot of different flows, and so I would imagine much like the fans, you know, that we, we, are, we go through the same types of emotions and, you know, try to be a play ahead and, and thinking about what the situation may be and making corrections and how much do you spend on corrections as opposed to going over there uh, looking ahead um, or assisting in corrections. I mean, the, the, all three sides are making corrections when they're not out there. Um, but there is a wide range of emotion uh, from excitement to disappointment. And, and if we win or lose, uh, if a player is injured, right, that all these things that go on throughout the game, uh, mistakes, positive plays, negative plays. But, you know, you have to, I think the biggest thing is try to keep your composure and, and get back to, to center uh, after each and every play and every situation. People say to me, Mike Vrabel enjoys what he does. I would say that I love what I do uh, and not even enjoy. I, I, I love this, and it's a challenge, uh, certainly this year. But uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to see through this thing, and there's a lot of good stuff out there. Right now that's hard to see because it's all about wins and losses. But there's, there's still some, some really good things going on in there. Mike Vrabel's Nissan keys are up next on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek. Stay with us. Titans taking on the Houston Texans for the second time in two weeks at NRG Stadium this Sunday. Kickoff set for 12:02. Last week, the keys, the Nissan keys to success, were a lot more about intensity and performance of the Titans and a lot less about specific things. Are we going to see the same sort of things this yeah, week? Yeah, I mean, we are. I mean, there's obviously things that we could talk about with C.J. Stroud or Nico Collins and – Noah Brown or the run game or making sure that we take care of these down linemen is penetrating front, uh, finding ways to run the football, protect the quarterback, you know, being able to continue to try to move the ball down the field averse, you know, quarters or their three week coverage. But this is going to be about us and about our ability to continue to invest in this football team and, and making sure that the people here and the players here continue to invest uh, and their teammates in this football team. Let's blow through these Nissan keys to success. Up first, it's pretty obvious you've got to be ready to go, ready to play, and play fast and aggressive. Well, I think that's the only way you have to have confidence in what you're doing to go out there and, and not, you know, just – there's got to be a certain play speed. This is a fast team. This is a fast defense that we're going to play. We're going to have to challenge that with some speed and aggressiveness. All right. Second key for Mike Vrabel's keys to success, energy and passion for the team, which you certainly had on Sunday. And, and we did. And, again, always proud of that effort. But uh, continuing to invest in the team, be a great teammate. Uh, easiest way to be a great teammate is to play with great effort, and that shows everybody that you care. And the final key to success for Mike Vrabel, 
Be decisive. Yeah, continue to to not, you know, block this guy, great, block him. Run this route, you know what I mean? We'll figure it out. But being decisive, don't second guess. Second guess leads to standing around. Being decisive means you're going to take action and go do something. You think Will Levis has a chance? I would say that I think he has a chance. All right, good to know. Remember, it's Titans at Houston this Sunday, 12.02, the kickoff. We're on the air on 104.5 and the great Titans radio stations throughout the region at 11 a.m., with Titans Countdown. Looking forward to having you there with us for that and looking forward to another AFC South showdown, the final game of 2023. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Let's go. Everybody knows it's our house. Fighting